listening to Ignite Humanity Live, and I am your host, Lady J.B. Owen. So happy to be here, founder of Ignite Humanity, Ignite Possibilities, and Ignite You. And why I'm here is because every single day I want to show up in your home, Monday to Friday, and talk about ways that you can ignite humanity. That's right, you. Now, some people are feeling like igniting humanity is a big deal, and it is because each and every one of us have a responsibility to ignite humanity by igniting ourselves and igniting others. And so we're talking about ways that you can ignite the lives of others by starting with yourself. And we've got guests today on the show and we're coming to you live from Los Angeles. That's right, we're live and I'm having so much fun because I've had my guests in the studio and we're talking one-on-one about ways to ignite humanity and make a big difference. Now, each and every one of us can do the things that we're sharing on this show. You can get up off the couch and feel inspired to do a little tiny incremental thing that is going to make an impact for others. And that's what we're talking about and why we are here. And we are hearing from people all over the globe who are doing all kinds of things from every age group, from every category, from everyone, because we all have to be uh, devoted to igniting humanity. Well, before we get started, I wanna talk about some of the things that you can do right now to ignite humanity. You can go to ignite humanity.life backslash hope and purchase classroom of hope bricks that are going into our schools. That's right. We are igniting lives of children and igniting uh, literacy through our classroom of hope program. That means $12 can buy 12 bricks. And we want to even make it more fun because it's February fun in February. You can buy 12 bricks for $12 and we will then use that $12 to send a bouquet of hope to to somebody that you love in honor of your gift and your donation. And so go to ignitehumanity.life backslash hope and buy $12 and 12 bricks to help ignite our schools. Well, we're going to have some fun today because we're talking about awakening. Today's show is all about awakening, waking up to new ideas, waking up to possibilities, waking up to the real you. And we have an incredible guest with us today. Ryan Horst is the CEO and founder of <laughs> tell me it right it's so crazy this is the most hilarious thing i'm so good at remembering and this okay wait blockchain insight group you got oh it. my gosh it. blockchain insight group blockchain insight group blockchain insight group and we are talking to him welcome to the show and thank you for having some fun with me yeah thank you so much for having me good to be okay here. so blockchain insight group i have to ask how did the big how did that all unfold yeah so <laughs> it's funny because when we were first starting our company so it's a crypto education company crypto consulting all that stuff there and we needed to create a name that made it very clear that we're in the Web3 world with blockchain, but we couldn't actually use the name crypto. Right. Because getting started with banks and with crypto, like they would find out that you're a crypto business and they'd actually shut you down. So we were racking our brains, me and my business partner, Yoni, and we ended up coming up with the name Blockchain Insight Group. And, it, and the acronym of it is B-I-G, BIG. Mm -hmm. And big crypto is a catchy name. So it's a way to have a professional name with something that's really easy to remember still. I, thank you. I like that you talked about education. That was one of the words that you said. How do you educate people? And it doesn't have to be necessarily crypto, but what is the power around educating people? Why that? The power around educating people is, so education is like the foundation of everything, right? So without education, we can't have like prosperous nations. Without education, we can't break ourselves free from different patterns and cycles. Education is really the stimulus for everything good, honestly, <laughs> really. So I think that if you're able to educate, then I think that is the core fundamental way that you can really make a difference in the world. I kind of agree with you because a lot of us are fearful of being a student of life. You know, we feel like we get to a certain age, we know it all, we've learned it all, we already know what it's all about. And we sort of push education away thinking like, there's something wrong with me if I have to educate myself or maybe I'm not smart enough. I'm sure you have a different opinion about educating and that we're all lifetime learners. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that there's ever a time that you stop learning. And the minute you stop learning, you should probably check your pulse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You should probably be like, What's right. uh, am I still here? Right. <laughs> and uh, because 
the minute you stop learning is the minute you stop evolving. That's the minute you stop becoming a better person. That's the minute you stop, you know, really growing into the ultimate person that you're meant to be. Ding, 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 because evolving is number two in the Ignite Humanity principle. We talk about evolving and that we as human beings need to evolve. In fact, it's encoded in our brains that we have the desire to evolve and no different than the dandelion that pushes its way through the pavement. Mm -hmm. We are determined and tenacious about learning and evolving and I think that really probably lends itself to some of the things you're doing absolutely making people learn a little bit more being tenacious <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so where did you get that tenacity from what, what's happened in your uh, life man. what's some of the backstory yeah so I grew up in a home with an entrepreneur dad and uh, so I got to see him really be tenacious with really making business work. I got to see him go through the struggles of entrepreneurship. I got to see him go through the, the highs of entrepreneurship and everything there. Um, but ultimately, I didn't want to live a life that was for Saturday and Sunday. Mm. And that was the one line that I said to my mom that made her like super all for me being into the entrepreneur world. Um, Cause I wasn't willing to go the corporate route right after, right after college, I was going to go to medical school and then be a doctor and everything. And then ended up not doing that because I really wanted to enjoy every single day of the week. And I wanted the geographical freedom that's possible with the ability to own an online business in today's world. So really just the unrelenting belief that I can create the ultimate life for myself um, is what drove me to be tenacious to make it all happen. I think we should stop on that. I wanted to create the ultimate life for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think not a lot of people are saying that. Not a lot of people are dialing into not only do I want to create the ultimate life for myself, but I'm capable. Mm -hmm. And through education, through learning, through trying different things, you can begin to create the ultimate life for yourself. Share a little bit about that because some people might be sitting there thinking like, how, Ryan, do I do that? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... It kind of started for me when, like I said, I was I graduated college with a degree in biomedical sciences from the University of South Florida. I was on pace to go to medical school and I was studying for all of that. And I remember laying in my bed one day, just kind of wondering, like, is this actually the right path for me? Mm. And uh, it hit me when I was like scrolling through Instagram and I'm seeing all these 18 year old kids that are like crushing it, living over in Bali, making money on the Internet, driving their Lamborghinis. And I remember thinking to myself, like, there's nothing that they're doing that I can't do, mm. right? Like, if I'm able to go through and get this hard degree, if I'm able to learn all these very conceptual topics that are hard to conceptualize, then why can't I do whatever they're doing? They just have knowledge in a certain area of life that I haven't learned quite yet. So if I'm able to learn all these things I've already proven to myself that I can learn, right. then I just need to step into a different vehicle that enables me to push forward towards that life that I know I'm capable of living. So I just looked at my non-negotiables in life and the non-negotiables were, I need to have geographical freedom. I need to be able to work from wherever, wherever I want. I need to be able to have a level of financial freedom that I can go and do whatever I want. And ultimately it was about living a life without resistance. So, and resistance can come in many forms. It can be the form of financial resistance where I can't buy something that I want. It can be the geographical resistance of like, I can't travel because I'm tied to this one area. It can be an ego resistance, which is a big one. Wow. Ego resistance mm -hmm. where you won't allow yourself to go and do a certain thing because it would be a hit to your ego, right? right? Which is all made up at the end of the day. So I ended up discovering for myself that in order to be able to create a life without this resistance, to be able to control all the variables that can create these resistance points, I need to be an online entrepreneur. And I just made a post on Instagram one day when I was starting my first business, announcing up, to folks. everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, I made a, I made a post that I was starting my first business and. That business was an online fitness apparel company that called MPF that didn't really go anywhere at all, but it was the most important business that I started because I labeled myself as an online entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And the minute I labeled myself, my ego <laughs> would not allow me to do anything other than that or 
sorry, it wouldn't allow me to do anything that wouldn't be working towards that goal, right? Towards that mission. Right. Big differentiator. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. Like I can、mm-hmm. do other things,、mm-hmm. but everything has to be in alignment with getting to that. Goal at the end there, kind of like, and something I say to people all the time is like, if you want to own a coffee shop, go work in a coffee shop, right? So like, on pace to get to where you want to be at. So that kind of just guided me in that direction, and I've done a number of things where, you know, I have like three businesses that are quote unquote failed,、um, but. They all taught me the things necessary so that I could progress in this area and learn the skills necessary so that when I launched the ultimate business that I wanted to start, which is this one, the、mm-hmm. cryptocurrency consulting company, then I had all the tools necessary to really make it happen. You said re- two really important words, and I want to go back to them. One, you said I started,、mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people don't start. You know, they think about it. They have an idea. They have an outline. They have an opinion, but they don't really get started. Was there something that was there some ignite moment? I love to talk about ignite moments. They're those things that spark and fire and ignite in you. Was there an ignite moment that got you really knowing that I was going to start doing this, not sit back and wait, but start?、Mm-hmm. Yes.、Yeah, so I have two ignite moments.、Um, the first one. Was really just like I said when I was laying in bed, and I just saw, well, if they can do it, yeah, I、right. can. I can do、right? it. They just have the skills in a certain area that I don't have yet, and I have the ability to learn. So if I have the ability to learn, and there are skills for me to learn, I just need to realign my, you know,、uh, learning process、mm-hmm. towards what these things are here, so that I can learn on that path instead of this medical path. path. That isn't going to get me to the end result to be able to control all these variables in my life that lead to resistance,、um, and so that was the first one. And then the second ignite moment was when I lowered my ego.、Mm. Um, so what happened was I was、uh, running a、um, marketing agency. It's more like a freelance type thing where I was doing, you know, helping different businesses in the online business world with their. Uh, coaching and consulting offers are trying to bring them in clients and like creating chatbots for them using like dr- drag and drop no code software, and、um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but、um, and when that finally started to work, I finally had a good month where I had made over five k for the first time, and then I realized I didn't like it. Wow. And I was like, "Oh, wonderful!" So I've been working towards this thing, and I don't even like it. Wow! And then、uh, I was about to move to Las Vegas、um, with somebody that I was dating at the time, and I ended up getting hit by my own car. <laughs> How? <laughs>、um, that's my that's my marketing trick. To, you know, get everybody interested.、Um, so I was getting new wheels. Put on my vehicle so that I could go off to Vegas and drive there, and everything would be safe.、Uh, new tires, new wheels, everything, and because I had like a dent in my wheel.、Um, and when I got that all fixed, it was done incorrectly, and I had to go back and I had to let them get in my vehicle to fix it because they didn't fix it appropriately the first time. And when I was getting out of my vehicle, I went to walk behind it, and as the shop owner got into my car, he actually backed into me、oh、my with my own car. Wow! <laughs>、um, and nothing too serious. I ended up having. Like a sprained MCL,、um, wasn't comfortable at, at all. But when I went to、uh, get the MRI done on my knee to see what was going on, I was like meditating in the MRI, and I was really thinking about this big life decision that I had on moving out to Las Vegas, and I also had this、um, business coaching opportunity that was like. Just kind of there, I was like, there was a position that I could apply for to be a business coach, but I didn't want to work for somebody else. Right. right. <laughs>、um, and when I was sending the MRI, I was thinking about it, and I was like, what are the benefits? What are the cons? And I noticed that really the only con to one taking the business coaching position was that I'd be working for somebody else, and. That's also a pro at the same time, exactly. Because、uh, I would be able to learn so many incredible things with this eight-figure online business coaching company,、um, and then I'd be able to coach their students, and it would give me the confidence to know that I really can do this whole entrepreneur thing. Because I hadn't had the ultimate success myself yet,、um, but then it also prompted me to kind of look at the relationship I had to see what I was missing and what wasn't filling my cup and what was, and then. I ultimately decided I needed to separate from that, and I needed to 
not move to Vegas with that individual. And then I also needed to take this business coaching position. And I came into that and it completely changed my life because I was given the ability to have people listen to me and allow me to coach them in the online business world. And while I hadn't had the ultimate success with entre- in like online entrepreneurship at that point, um, these individuals, um, the Chittisters, they taught me everything I needed. All, they connected all the missing dots that mm-hmm. I hadn't quite connected mm-hmm. yet. A lot of that was learning sales. And then... This is a big was, ignite moment. <laughs> yeah. I was this able to... This is a big to, ignite yeah, moment. I was able to learn all of that. But the bigger thing is that I was able to coach individuals on all this stuff. And then I could see the impact that I was making on them. And being able to, I had students that were telling me that I was changing their life. Mm -hmm. I had people telling me like, because of this, like I'm able to leave my nine to five job completely. And it's going to give me a better relationship with my family, uh, with my, with my wife and all of that stuff. And it really made me realize how powerful I am. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I again, I love that you, you said started and then you said failure that you didn't a while ago. You went back and said, I moved through a failure. And so you were hit by a car. You had all of these challenges. You changed your relationship. There were all these things that we could classify as failure. And yet you decided to use all of that as a catalyst mm-hmm. to really help you feel into, lean into, decide what it is you wanted to do that was absolutely going to ultimately benefit you. And then the end of your story was really how it benefited others. You Mm -hmm. had people telling you how you were helping them. And I think folks, if you're listening to Ryan's story, the, the real essence is that when we ignite ourselves, And when we step into our greater power, we have the ability to ignite others. Mm -hmm. And that just creates this wonderful ripple effect that allows us to ultimately reach the goal of the show, Ignite Humanity. Mm -hmm. So really powerful story. I love that you had two amazing Ignite moments and many to come, I'm Mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about igniting humanity in general. You're young. Well, we're the same age. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) You're a little younger than me and... Your generation, what's the take right now on this idea of igniting humanity? What's, what's it going to take to really make a difference? Because we're leaning on your generation to help pull us through, push us forward, and really make the future the place we want to be. Yeah, so I have a lot of incredible millennial friends that are also like entrepreneurs that push me and I push them and amazing people all over the country um, that I'm grateful to know and, and, you know, be in their lives. And the thing that I've noticed is that we all kind of realize that we have a responsibility as being millennials. And it's that we're kind of like that last generation that didn't have their entire lives entrenched with like digital yes. everything. Yes. So we still have that ability to understand the importance of disconnecting from it and to have the presence and not be on the phone all the time and and to have more of a healthy balance with it. Not saying that other generations don't have a healthy balance or anything, but it's there's just we have this feeling of this responsibility <laughs> and I, I think it's a very powerful position to be in because we're the last ones. So we need to make sure that we're, you know, bringing that forward into all the other generations with us. Yeah, it's interesting because I notice even my kids younger than you, but they they didn't grow up with the iPads and, the, mm-hmm. and all of the electronics and all of the games that all sort of happened a little bit later when they were in junior high. But I agree with you. There's this essence of like, how do we connect with each other? How do we create a better cohesiveness? Mm-hmm. And... Do you feel that the, the the new age is helping that, hindering that? I mean, you're into obviously the digital world and mm-hmm. the, the new what's up and coming. <laughs> How do you feel that's going to benefit us, hold us back? What is your thoughts on it? Um, quick clarification. How do I feel the digital world will yeah, be benefiting us? Yeah, and also the fact that there's a lot of, you know, you grew up in that era where there you actually had the essence of like that. You knew what was kind of before mm-hmm. what we're going yeah, exactly. through now with kids. Yeah. So I definitely think that it can benefit us. It's a tool at the end of the day. Right. But just like with every tool, there's times to use a, a hammer and there's times not to use a hammer. Mm-hmm. And as long as we can have a healthy balance with this tool, then it 
definitely makes our lives better. But the minute we let that tool be the tool that we use for every single interaction, every single moment of the day, and we don't separate away from that tool, then that's where problems can start to take place and where we can start to lose ourselves to the tool. A, a good example of this is social media, right? right? Because right. social media is this powerful tool, but one of the problems with it is that it can really affect the hormone levels in our brain with right. dopamine. Yes. These businesses like Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, they're in this business of, ga of gathering our attention. And if we're not aware that the whole intention for their business is to get our attention, because then they monetize our attention with ads, the more attention they get from us, the more money they can make. So in order to get more attention, they need to raise a level of dopamine that they draw out of us so that they can keep and hold that attention, especially with the attention spans of people dwindling right. by the day. Right. But if you're not aware of that, then you lose your focus, you yeah. lose your attention, and you don't allow yourself to be bored. And that's a big problem. People aren't really bored anymore. Right. And when you're bored, <laughs> quote unquote, <laughs> is when you actually have time to think, you yeah. have time to reflect. That's why meditation is so powerful right now, more powerful than it's ever been, because we don't have time to, or we don't have just time to just sit there now mm -hmm. because we can be constantly entertained by looking at our phone. There's not a moment in the day that we can't pull out our phone. It's so true. I remember when I was a kid and I would go to the doctor's office with my mom. If I forgot my Game Boy, I would just sit there. Yeah. And I would like <laughs> right, pull up right, one of these magazines right. and pretend to care about it a little bit and be like, now I'm bored and I'll put it back and I'll just sit there and I'll just twiddle my thumbs and whatnot. But that's gone. Yeah. There's no more just time where you just are forced to sit there with no entertainment. And I think that if we lose ourselves in this tool, then we lose our own ability to fully just think. Yeah. So my kids taught me the term IRL. <laughs> I didn't know that before. I'm like, what? IRL in real life? Yep. And I was like, what do you mean in real life? Like we're in real life, All but to have the terminology that IRL, I was like, yeah, can you please do the dishes IRL? <laughs> can you please clean up your room IRL? But it's fascinating because how many times have you been somewhere beautiful, Niagara Falls, you know, Kilimanjaro, a concert, a baby being born, and someone is looking at it through their phone. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at it through their eyes. They're not experiencing it. They're not really taking it in. And again, let's go back to humanity. How do we really see each other? versus looking at each other from our digital device? How do we really recognize one another? And that really comes to being together again, mm -hmm. spending more time and really creating connections and collaborations and community. So I'm a big proponent of community. I really think that we all have to come together. And as you talked about dopamine, Ignite moments actually provoke and stimulate dopamine because when we start telling each other our story, when you shared about what you went through and, and having that feeling, like I, I started to have like this really deep connection because all of that dopamine was going through my body through that. And I think what's the you know, the tragedy is people are trying to get those dopamine hits from other things mm -hmm. versus like how about we just have a conversation? Yeah. You know, how about we just connect? How about yeah. we just see one another? Yep. And so today's show is really about awakening. Can you awaken something in our viewers and really share with them a ways to connect? Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I would really pay attention to your online social media consumption, for starters, of course. And the reason for that is because the more attention you give it and the, the more you allow your bar of dopamine to go up to see what gives you that happy feeling, that euphoric feeling that you get from dopamine. And the more that you entrench yourself with this, this entertainment, the higher that bar goes. And then that makes little things like, you know, cleaning the dishes, doing the laundry, having a conversation with a friend, accomplishing a task. It means that you don't feel that yes. same level of emotion and that same level of euphoric feeling from accomplishing those things because your bar has gone so high from the entertainment that you mm -hmm. surround yourself with. But here's the thing, it's only gonna get higher 
with the increased innovation and technology that we have in this world, we're going to be throwing on VR goggles and having haptic devices on so you、mm -hmm. can feel、mm -hmm. things inside of this metaverse, right? So. Technology is continuing to create solutions that will allow us to receive more dopamine hits from all these online interactions that we have. And the thing is, is that since you're able to artificially create all of these situations that produce these dopamine, this dopamine, where where does it end? Does、right. it keep going? Right, and how can our bodies handle that? Exactly. So then, that can put you into this habitual cycle of chasing after that dopamine that you're getting in this alternate world, in this digital world, in this metaversal world, and that keeps you stuck there and not progressing inside of this current reality, this current world that we have. And I just want to say, folks, you get a lot of dopamine from going for a walk,、mm -hmm. playing with your kids, oh, with your pets. You know, running, climbing, doing a craft, achieving something. You know, spending time with people, laughing. That's some of the best dopamine on the planet. And so, thank you. You've given me some hits of dopamine just <laughs> hanging out together and seeing your amazing smile and sharing your great words. What would you love our audience to just know about you in our final few minutes? Yeah, so I would like for you guys to know that、um, uh, a, a takeaway that I would like for you guys to have for starters is just become aware, become aware of this digital world, and make it an intention to make yourself present in this real world that we have, because this is the true body that you have. This is you. This is like everything that you have is here. So take care of it and be aware of what's pulling you into this digital world, so that you don't lose sight of this physical world,、um, which I think will be more important as time progresses and we go more into creating more of a Increased situation or increased ignite、world. humanity,、yeah. igniting humanity. <laughs> yeah, and、um, but to know about me, I mean, I am a crypto educator, blockchain NFT educator. So we bring people into our community and we teach them everything they need to know about blockchain, crypto, NFTs, this Web three world that we're moving into, so that they can. Be safe when they decide that they want to start investing、mm -hmm. in this investment vehicle that we have. To give them the conviction necessary, so that when they invest in this technology, they don't just feel like they're gambling, like ninety percent of people do, where they're just throwing money at you know something like Solana because Rick from Yoga Class decided <laughs> it was a good say, idea,、yeah. right? And they don't actually know the problem、mm -hmm. that it solves in this world. So what we're doing is we're really opening up the eyes to the individuals to let them know that the problems that blockchain, crypto, NFTs, and this DeFi world is really solving, because that's the foundational knowledge necessary to be able to confidently invest in that space. And then we also teach how to actually make passive income inside of this world, because the interesting thing with a decentralized internet is the only reason it's decentralized is because it uses my help, your help. Everybody in the audience is help in order to operate. That's the term decentralization. It needs us in order to fuel this engine of this new internet that we're creating. And since it needs us, it has to financially incentivize us. Right, and、so、we're it has able to, to make bring us together. It. And, and it, it does. It does bring us together、Absolutely. in a pretty insane way. I've、yeah. never seen communities like a Web three NFT <laughs> community. It's the strongest community I've. Ever seen or ever been a part of? Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. So, folks, if you want to know more about Ryan, check out the inner、uh, the email below. Sorry, check out the website below, and you can find out a bit more about Ryan. Thanks for being here. We love learning about new stuff, and that's where we're headed. The universe and all of the things that are happening in humanity are moving in to this new technology. So, we wanted to support you in learning a little bit about it. Well, of course, we are happy that you're on the show. If you'd like to learn. More and find out more on this episode. Please go to ignitehumanity. life backslash watch, and you can see this episode and all the episodes we've done up till now, and all of our amazing guests. And of course, if you've got a story to share in your igniting humanity, we'd love to hear from you. Go to ignitehumanity. life backslash watch. A、uh, story backslash share, and you can share with us what you've been up to. You'll see the link、uh, down below. And if you would like to go back to、um, checking out classroom. 
of hope please check it out at ignitehumanity.life and we can support you in getting one of those beautiful bouquets of hope for someone that you love well happy to have you here we'll see you tomorrow and go out and ignite somebody's life all right blessings now more than ever we need to come together to connect with one another We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your Ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures. <laughs>